you've got the arena program uh, in the main program, which we recommend highly because it has every bit of information you need about what's happening and also vehicles. But uh, enough of that. Um, I say, little Daimler. Daimlers are always easy to spot. They have the classic Daimler stuff. Uh, I believe this wagon actually attended the first uh, Welland rally way, way back 50 years ago. So lovely to see it here in cracking working order with lots of lipids. So there we are. 1915, 100 years old next year for the yes. for next rally. We hope it's back next year for its 100th birthday. Something quite a lot more modern now coming up, carrying a little Fergie Epi. Uh, off our uh, map, another one of the great British marks. That one beautifully restored. I don't think it would have had paintwork like that when it was new, but that's no uh, uh, reason to uh, not paint it properly. On the other hand, when you get up to something like this lovely set of John Normans, of course, we've gone to forward control where the driver sits. Uh, virtually a long way, it does sit alongside the engine and that reduces the length of the vehicle which makes it a lot happier when you're maneuvering. Uh, you'll notice all of you will have seen space is not trivial to them at all, so uh, completely different indeed. Now for something we haven't seen before this week, so it's the Reliance. Yeah, lovely to see the little Reliant region back. Uh, when, uh, when I was quite a small lad. Very economical transport, of course. Three wheel, very manoeuvrable. Um, probably the ride and comfort left a bit to be desired. Forerunner for to the Reliant Robins that we saw later on in life? Oh, surely, yes. Yes, indeed, Rich, yes. Now, go on, you have a go at this one, because you've been studying this. Hardly moving at all, and look at that, fantastic. Turning on a sixpence, I think, was the expression back in the day. That is fantastic. The they were built, course. of course, by Scammell. That's one of the early ones, the little side valve engine. And now we've got a lovely Foden. Uh, Foden winch tractor, a heavy haulage tractor. You'll notice the massive hubs on the back wheels. It's also fitted with a winch. You can see that poking out the back. The Foden winch is always easy to spot. Uh, with that prominent brake drum on the side. Yes, they, they have that uh, patina is the word I That's think people use it. Now then, if you're sharp-eyed, you'll see there's a Rolls-Royce badge on the front of this lovely scammer coming along now. It's fitted with the big Rolls engine, which is supercharged. Quite unusual uh, method of boosting the power of something like that. Steve, as ever, at the controls, good morning. Uh, this was new, I think, the Camel Lairds, uh, and used for internal moves in the shipyard. Um, it's ballasted, uh, Alan Lloyd has had it for quite a few. And our first, uh, first of our coaches, the uh, the Foden from 1948. This one is particularly interesting. First of all, you've got the half cab, which was the classic style of those days. But this one, built by Foden, and it's fitted with the quite revolutionary Foden two-stroke engine. Only four and a half litres, but kicking out well on to 200 horsepower. And if he opens it up a little bit in a moment, you'll hear that uh, very characteristic howl of the Foden two-stroke as it moves away. Uh, another earlier Leyland, this time a Leyland Lynx, actually. I know that because it's written on the bottom of the radiator. Um, but Leyland, like a lot of the manufacturers, uh, say, talking about earlier, uh, had bonneted trucks in the early days. A different one coming up again now. We've got a comma, another name, which, as I mentioned earlier, disappeared from the uh, uh, world of uh, vehicles as we know it. Now, this one has got twin headlights, and that tells me it's probably a two-stroke. Commas were the other. Now then, we've got what I would call in Shropshire a man's wagon coming now. Phone eight wheeler. Now, if you fancy collecting, a wagon. I noticed there was a for sale sign in the windscreen of this one this morning. But um, absolute classic uh, British eight-wheeler there. Uh, Gardner engine, probably a David Brown gearbox. Another lovely old Leyland, which according to the program is a Ford Model A tipper, but never mind. <laughs> Again, we've got the bonnet on the front. As I say, it's very difficult working on the engine. You get these the four, forward control ones. You've got this lovely ERF KV coming around now. Imagine trying to get to the engine in that. You're standing on the floor or on the steps, leaning in through the door. 
uh, over the top of the driver's seat trying to change the fan belt or get to the injector pump or something. So working on them was hard work before the uh, tilt cab came along, which made life a lot easier. Very nice CRF KV there, looking very, very handsome in that uh, uh, black finish. Once again with the ink wheel configuration. Again, the Gardner engine, Gardner David Brown, probably coached the axles, which uh, was the uh, something a bit earlier, pre-war AEC, Mammoth Major. Um, again, this was the era when uh, life wasn't so comfortable in the trucks. If you were out in that in December, you'd have bike clips on to stop the grass going up your trouser legs. You see, it's got a substantial towing jaw on the back, so it probably worked with the trailer as well. Of the little uh, BMC commercial, I didn't spot whether it was Austin or Morris. Morris, actually. Morris, yeah. It's got what was often called the, the threatening bit cab. Uh, this is a bit unusual. We've got a Dodge here now, uh, fitted with a Perkins engine. You can see that badge on the front with the four circles. That's Perkins badge, the square deal all round, that stood for. Uh, Dodge, lovely Matador there, AEC Matador. Uh, as I said yesterday, this could have gone across North Africa with Montgomery, for all we know, or up through Italy. Could have walked, paddled in the water on the Normandy landings, because that was the standard army uh, heavy gun tractor. For four-wheel drive, uh, fitted with a winch. We've got a lovely little half-size here of uh, a Scammell show track. Now, when steam was on its way out, Scammell started building show tracks to replace the engines. and. Uh, this lovely little uh, half size is a, is a very good copy of the Scammell show track. Uh, Sidney Harrison, the, the, the uh, salesman, was, was a great uh, enthusiast for these. But interestingly, Scammell's only made about, I think it was 19 altogether, but virtually all of them have survived, interestingly enough. Nice Bedford now, we've got here in front of the box a little short wheelbase Bedford tipper. Probably officially five ton Bedford, I would think, but. Um, it would have carried seven and a half or eight ton, I'm sure, on many occasions. Very nice Dennis, very early Dennis coming through now. 1927 on this particular model. Yeah. Uh, again, you can see uh, the, the classic lines of, uh, of the early, uh, uh, early trucks. Now joining us, the, uh, the Albion again, the drop side. 1952, this particular vehicle. Albion's, of course, were a uh, uh, Scottish company built, built uh, in Glasgow. Later became part of uh, the Leyland Group, Leyland, Albion, Scammell, but uh, certainly the Scotsmen were very, very loyal to their uh, Albion trucks. And very durable they were indeed, uh, put up with a lot of hard work. First of our bet for TKs. I'm sure we'll see some more of those as the morning goes on. Uh, they were pretty much ubiquitous. You saw you can see a lot of these on the roads, wouldn't you? You would indeed. I mean, it was probably the world's favourite delivery truck in, in, in its heyday. Um, that one actually was built and still is a tractor unit, but uh, it's now used just as a, a ballast tractor. But it would have had a, a fifth wheel or whatever and pulled the trailer. Another little Bedford coming along now. The uh, medium wheelbase flat, uh, the Bedford O-type, say off referred to as the Coronation Bedford. Um, the Bedfords, the, the gearbox in those was quite challenging. Um, they weren't the easiest truck in the world to drive. Uh, interesting, very interesting vehicle Craig College is bringing round. You might think it's a Scammell, but it's not, it's an Atkinson. And uh, I don't know how successful they were as a replacement for the Scammells, but we think maybe Pickfords had fallen out with Scammells and ordered a few of these off, uh, off it. A uh, lovely old Foden here, uh, when it was demobbed it went to B and J Davis at Bucknell and in fact it's finished up back virtually in the same part of the world. Another nice uh, ERF, Steve uh, Morgan coming along with, uh, uh, I say, a classic uh, ERF of its era. Again with the, the Gardner engine, probably a David Brown gearbox. Um, virtually an indestructible combination that were good for millions of miles. Sadly, Gardner, like a lot of the British truck manufacturers, didn't keep up with the changing times. Uh, hence, they've all disappeared. Gardner's 
recently uh, disappeared. They've long gone from commercial transport, but uh, you'll find them in fishing boats. Now we've got the Scamel Explorer. The Explorer was the first of the Scamels that was made uh, a six-wheel drive configuration. And here's the later one with what is always known as the Mickey Mouse cap. Doesn't that look a picture? Randy, you ready for delivery to Hoveringham? And I know that John and his team have spent a great deal of time and effort restoring this wagon from a very derelict state. And the painstaking work they put just into the rigging of the Neville Mills body alone, uh, almost defying relief. Fabulous to see it. We're back to Scotland. Scotston. The Albion. A later interesting cab that looks as though it's a fiberglass or, or is it beautifully shaped aluminium panelling around the front? I guess that's uh, aluminium on ash. Yeah, I, I wasn't, wasn't looking to be this almost compact. But uh, the Volvo, the F10, these, these were the sort of vehicles that chased our own British trucks off the market, off the roads, because um, they were so much more comfortable, advanced, built cabs, they had heaters that worked radio, driving your shirt sleeves in winter even. And that's followed by a lovely little Morris commercial, beautifully turned out, side written to A.T. Bird, Andrew Bird, our local roofing contractor, who likes to do the thing very much in style, and as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he's carrying his ladders and ropes, and his builder's gin wheel pulley, and he's nicely been decked out with period bunting. Uh, one would expect it to be almost in the colour of the procession for the, for the coronation. Well, there we are. One of the last of the proper Leylands, I suppose, the Leyland Cruiser. Um, in the, um, I can't remember the model of the cab, but it was common to the Leyland group, wasn't it? Yeah, 16 tonne, 260 horsepower, 1626 on. 